In the previous episode, we followed the Iori River from Tianeti. We visited the fortress towns of Portroma, Ujarma, and the Kolagiri Monastery Complex. We traveled to David Garaje and finished our trip at the Ilia Monastery, Dedoplitskaro, just a few kilometers from Hornabuji. This time, we will travel the Dariali Hornabuji Road, which passed through Tianeti and the Alazani Valley and headed towards Hornabuji. We will start this route from the fortress town of Kvitera, which closed off enemies and guarded the Alazani Valley. Kvitera is built on a hill on the right bank of the Ilto River. It controlled the boundary between the mountain and the plain. The shortest road from the Alazani Valley to Tianeti, Mtiuleti, Shavhevsureti, and the Dariali Gorge passed through Kvitera. It had a military political function, while at the same time, it was an important trade artery used by caravans, as well as cattle owners and shepherds. Historical documents contain information that Kvitera was already a well-fortified fortress in the 8th century. However, this does not imply that nothing was here before that time. Vakhtan Gorgasali's concept was to carefully guard the north-south road. Of course, the road leading from the north to the Alazani Valley would not remain unprotected. Kvitera was well guarded by cliffs, high walls, and battle towers. The citadel's water reservoir was maintained using clay pipes, so the city did not suffer from water shortages even during a siege. During the Kakheti annexation campaign of the 11th century, Kvitera was the only fortress that King Bagrat IV of Georgia was unable to capture. After the Mongol invasion, a severe economic crisis began in the country, followed by the invasions of Timur Leng and Shah Abbas. Their goal was to completely destroy the trade route and its infrastructure. They wanted to make the roads, which they could not control themselves, unusable for the caravans. As a result, Ftera lost its basic function and, like many other cities and settlements, eventually became a historical monument. Due to its unique beauty and location, Kvitera possesses all of the prerequisites to acquire a new function and become an important tourist attraction in line with modern requirements. The impression of this place will last for a long time. Most of the caravan routes from Kvitera to Hornabuji are the same as today's roadways and can be viewed by anyone. So we are moving in a direction that is relatively less traveled. You often see a church in a dense forest with no traces of other buildings around. However, it is clear that the church was built for people and a church in the woods indicates that people used to live around it where the forest now grows. Not far from Kvitera, about 30 kilometers from the village of Matani, there is the Skrakara, or Nine Gates Church, on the mountain, which was also built during the reign of Vakhtang Gorgasali in the 5th century. Today, the monastery is inactive, hidden by woods and silence, but in its time, it probably had a large settlement around it. Allegedly, it was part of Kvitera's economic area. The monastery was surrounded by a wall, However, in general, the security of the monastery and the settlement around it would still depend on the Kvitera garrison. Therefore, the abandonment of Kvitera would naturally affect Skrakara as well. If we look at the location of churches, we see that villages in ancient times were built in the highlands where the population felt more protected. Relocation to the plains and open spaces began after fears have subsided, although the new settlement was usually named after an old village. It seems that the village around this church 
was also emptied and this beautiful church was left alone in the forest. The village of Tetritskalebi, or White Waters, is located on the northeastern slope of the Gombori Ridge on the Tel Aviv-Tbilisi Highway. It was named after the white sulfurous mineral waters. Tetritsklebi is a village with a long history. In the Middle Ages, a caravan route passed through this village. It is situated near the town of Kuntusi and the fortress of Psiti. We return to the Gombori Pass from Matani Skrakara to take a very interesting route from the Iori Gorge to the Alazani Valley. Today, this road is also abandoned. The Gombori Pass was an important crossroads. We have already traveled the old historical road that follows along the Gombori Ridge that leads to Sagarejo and other villages of the Iori Valley, as well as to Cheremi and Tel Aviv. But there was another route that led from Tetrisklebi to Zemo Hodashani, and now we are following this path. If a passenger was going to the upper Alazani Valley, in the direction of Hodasheni Ahmeta or Alaverdi Tusheti, he did not have to go through Tel Aviv. Instead, he would turn left at Tetrisklebi and move directly to Zemo Hodasheni. In the age of automobiles, this road was forgotten and covered by forest. However, in its time, there was quite intense traffic here and people lived nearby. We found a guide in Tetritsklebi, Georgi Kibishauri, a local resident, who knew the way and was very helpful. It would have been difficult to find the way without him. On the way from Tetrisklebi to Zemelchodasheni, we came across a church. As they say, it has a very interesting name, Amindasturi. It is also called Abidasturi, which is probably a modified form of Amindasturi. It must be a very old church. It was built with huge boulders, but half of the church has collapsed. It is said to have been blown up during the communist era. This would not have been uncharacteristic behavior for them. We know, and the map also shows, about halfway between Tetritsklebi and Zemochodasheni, there is an abandoned monastery in a dense forest. People usually come here from Zemochodasheni on foot or with off-road vehicles. However, the road from Gombari Pass to the monastery is forgotten today. The forest is leafy and almost nothing can be seen. But in its time, it was the shortest way from the Gombori Mountain to Zemo Chodasheni. We've traveled more than halfway from Tretri Sklebi. We can already see the Alazani Valley and the villages there. From here, I cannot exactly see which village it is. I think it could be Alvani. The GPS shows that there is a mile and a half left to the Zema Khodashani Monastery. As they say in fairy tales, we had walked a long way when George finally took us to the monastery, which is so well hidden in the forest that we could not see it until we were within arm's length of its walls. We can say without exaggeration 
that this is a grand complex. It has a high wall, there are remains of a palace and other buildings, as well as a large church where the wall paintings are still preserved. Blue tiles are scattered in the yard. By the way, Kvatera's roof is covered with similar tiles, and we suppose that this church was also covered with these blue tiles. The wall is up to two meters thick. It seems that this complex could have provided serious resistance to an enemy. This monument deserves a lot of attention, and this area promises great and interesting discoveries around it. This monastery, hidden in the woods, was one of the most important economic and intellectual centers of its time. There must have been a rather large settlement around it where one of the branches of the road connecting Kartli and Kacheti passed. We arrived at Zemo Chodasheni from the Gombori Pass and continue our way to Kornabuji along the left bank of the Alazani. We must visit the two villages of Laliskuri and Pshaveli. They are situated next to each other by the Story River, flowing from Tusheti, but look like one village. Very interesting news is waiting for us in these villages. On the way, we have to pass the Alaverdi Temple, which is one of the most famous temples in Georgia. Almost everyone already knows everything about it. Although we cannot add anything new, we cannot avoid it either. We have to say something. The Alaverdi Monastery was founded in the 6th century by one of the Assyrian fathers, Joseph Alaverdili, and it immediately became the main shrine of this region. However, it seems that this place used to be the religious and economic center of the entire region even before. Alaverdi is located in the middle of the Alazani Valley and looks like a lighthouse from all sides. This temple has been a place of great gathering of people of different nationalities and faiths since ancient times. A centuries-old tradition based on folk wisdom and life experience, and I am not sure if it has an analog anywhere else, comes from ancient times. In the fall, the big holiday of Alaverdoba is held, which used to last for three weeks. Dido, Lesgins, Kis, Ossetians, and others came to participate in it together with Georgians. Christians and Muslims celebrated together. Feasts were held, and at the same time, a large market was set up. People traded, got to know each other, made friends, and ultimately lived better lives. We are now at the Tali Fortress, located in the village of Laliskuri. It has been a large and powerful fortress, but was completely destroyed by an earthquake and rebuilt by King Irekla in the 18th century. Across the river is the village of Pshaveli. These two villages occupied a very special strategic location. The road connecting Kacheti and Tusheti, which is of great importance for the Georgian economy, starts here and follows the gorge of the Story River. Laliskuri and Pshaveli were the gatekeepers of this gorge. Kacheti. 
Georgian historical sources often mention Stori Erastavi and the Nakchevani fortress, which was one of the strongest fortresses in all of Kakheti. Those who owned the Nakchevani fortress claimed to dominate the whole of Kakheti. The exact location of the fortress has not been determined, but it is likely that, according to the descriptions, it must have been somewhere here at the beginning of the Story Valley. The traveler on his way to Kaziki, of course, could not proceed without seeing Nekresi. It is very exciting to look at the Alazani Valley from the battlements of this beautiful monastery, which has a great history. The city of Nekresi was founded in the second century BC. One of the first churches in Georgia was built here in the 4th century. In the 6th century, one of the Assyrian fathers, Abibos Nekreseli, settled in Nekresi. Nekresi was a very important cultural political base from where Georgian influence spread to the North Caucasus. This is where Christianity penetrated Dagestan. The monastery was surrounded by a stone wall and was a well-protected fortress. From here, almost the entire Alazani Valley can be seen and the caravan route that passed in front of the city was easily controlled. The city was completely destroyed by the invasions of Timur Lang in the 14th century. However, Nekresi continued to exist as an Episcopal center. We entered the village of Anaga. From here began Kiziki, formerly called Kambechovani, the region without a lord which had no lord and was directly subordinate to the king. The Tsivgombori Ridge gradually decreases in height, and in the extreme south, the plateau between the two rivers forms a peninsula which overlooks the Iori Valley to the west and the Alazani Valley to the east. It is on this peninsula that Kiziki, or Kambechovani, is located. Economically, it was always well off and was densely populated. All of the branches of the highway coming from Dariali eventually connected to this peninsula, or Kiziki, and reached Hornabuji. It is difficult to say with certainty why this region was called Kambechovani, or abundant in buffaloes. Some explain this by the large amounts of buffaloes, and it may be true. The fact is that buffaloes love water and heat. Kiziki has been intensely involved in the political and economic processes of the world since ancient times. This road was well known to Strabo, who wrote that the road from Albania to Iberia was laid through Kambesinebi or Kambechovani. The Georgian kings attached great importance to Kambechovani as a major outpost. Saint Nino, the enlightener of Georgia, was buried in Bodbe near the Georgian border, and King Mirian of Kartli spent significant funds to strengthen and beautify this region. Immediately after the burial of Saint Nino, King Mirian built a church and the construction continued around this church in the following centuries. One of the important cultural centers was established here to protect the country from political and religious expansion. The establishment of monasteries facilitated the recultivation of the war-torn areas. The burial of the Enlightener of Georgia, St. Nino, in Bodbe meant the establishment of a religious center at the country's southern border, which was an important political step. The monasteries not only secured the people by stone walls, but also created an ideological shield protecting the country's identity. 
Kaziki was given special attention by Vaktang Gorgasali, who appointed a bishop in Bodbe and took important measures to fortify this region, which was opposed by Mazdi and Persia from the south. The fierce political-religious confrontation between Persia and Georgia was largely driven by economic interests as the struggle was for the acquisition of winter pastures and trade routes. Kiziki was a region inhabited by free people. They had no domestic lords here. Moreover, they did not admit those lords who came from the outside. Constantly facing danger at the border and living only in self-reliance, the inhabitants of Kiziki are accustomed to perseverance and independent decision-making. The central government understood the Kazikian way of life as well as their arrogance, as this was a region constantly repelling the enemy's first blow. Enduring here required a special psychological strength and a strong character that had been forming for centuries. It is noteworthy that the powerful army of the Arabs faced the fiercest resistance in Kambechovani in the 8th century, and according to Arab historians themselves, the most dangerous enemies for them throughout the Caucasus were the Kizikians. The center of modern Kiziki is one of the most beautiful cities of Georgia, Signagi, with its local flavor, pretty houses, winding cobbled streets, and a unique landmark, a view of the Alazani Valley. Until the 5th century, Signagi was the main defensive structure in the region. In the 5th century, Vakhtang Gorgasali expanded the country's borders, moved the center of the region to the south, and built the fortress town of Hornabuji there. When Hornabuji was emptied, Signagi regained its function as the center of the region and became the center of Kakhetian trade and crafts. We walked a long way, and our TV caravan arrived in Hornabuji from Dariali. Instead of a big and noisy city, as well as in Ujarma, Porchoma, and Cheremi, we found silence and emptiness here. The Hornabuji fortress near the town of Dedoplitskaro, at the narrowest point of the Iori Alzani connecting road, is built on two side by side rocks and overlooks a narrow passage between these rocks left by nature. This city was the main guard of the southern border, and all the caravans leaving the country or entering the country had to pass by here. The enemy could not avoid such an important fortress, and so the first blow was always taken by Hornabuji. Due to its special strategic location, a fortress city was built here. Hornabuji was one of the strongest fortresses in Georgia and the most difficult to besiege. The Persian historian Iskander Munshi wrote, from the threshold of the gate to the place where the fortress guards stand, there are 560 stairs. If they had a single source of water other than rainwater storage, it would be impossible to capture this fortress. Today, Hornabuji is hidden in the forest 
and in silence, and only occasional tourists visit this place. In the past, there were a lot of comings and goings here. In Hornabuji, the caravans would rest, replenish supplies, and eventually, when the defenders opened the gates of the city, they would set out on their way to the magical world of Asia. Vakhtang Gorgasali lived for 60 years, of which he reigned for 45 years. He accomplished uniting the borderless and poorly managed country into a powerful state, closed its borders to enemies, and opened them to trade. He sharply distanced himself from the Mazdi in Persia and proclaimed Christianity as the sole ideological basis of the state. Even on his deathbed, he called for the unwavering adherence to the Western course. Through his efforts, the Georgian church gained autocephaly, which meant that the Georgian state was an independent entity in the Christian world and not part of Byzantium. All in all, Vakhtang Gorgasali embodied the political economic concept of state development and started the grand construction of fortresses and cities along the Darieli Hornabuji Highway. Since then, the country has endured a lot of destruction and unrest. However, the concept of its development elaborated by Vakhtang Gorgasali proved to be viable. Despite severe setbacks and periods of hardships, Georgia always returned to the path of development set by Vakhtang Gorgasali. That is the end of our journey in history, although we're not going to end the series yet. We will never be able to leave Kakheti unless we visit the amazing environment and nature where this historical road passed. Therefore, in the next episode, we will visit Lagoteki, Batsara, and the Vashlavani Nature Reserves, where prehistoric nature is preserved intact. We will see amazing places, beautiful lakes, fabulous waterfalls, and the oldest tree in Georgia, which grew here in Vakhtang Gorgasali's times and is still alive today.